A history of ISP regulations, new malware is infecting industrial control systems, and three men plead guilty in the Mirai botnet case. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for December 19, 2017. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire and that is always the best way to support the show and will help us reach our next goal. This next goal opens up a special Q&A between me and all of the patrons, plus it helps me upgrade the set and honestly we're in dire need to invest in a new camera so I'm really looking forward to that. Patreon also reversed their new fee structure decision which is great news. If you don't know what I'm talking about with that, just check out my previous post on the Patreon page. And now, on to the news. On Thursday of last week, the FCC voted 3-2 to two along party lines to repeal net neutrality rules from the previous Title II ISP regulations originally formed in 2015. Voting in favor included Republicans Michael O'Reilly and Brendan Carr, along with Ajit Pai, the chairman of the FCC. Voting against were Democrats Jessica Rosenworcel and Minion Claiborne. That same day, some Congress members called on the FCC to cancel the vote, including Senators Susan Collins and Angus King of Maine, who wrote a letter to the FCC calling for public hearings. Since they voted for the repeal, rules would take effect about 60 days after published in the Federal Register, in which time many consumer advocacy groups and Congress members are vowing to introduce lawsuits or legislation to block the change. Illinois or Oregon, Massachusetts, and Washington have all announced suits as well. Now, net neutrality at its core derives from internet freedom. It's the ability for a user to freely explore, learn, express, grow, and mature from the World Wide Web without the Big Brother effect of an ISP. It's the equality of a website that counts, not the money in the website's pocket and whether they can pay an ISP for faster service. It's that freedom to explore without bias based on fees or judgment calls made by an ISP. My crime is that of curiosity, and yet, this new repeal allows ISPs to choose what they deem worthy of our view. At least, that's what they'll be permitted to do. We go back to times before 2015, when in 2007, for example, Comcast was interfering with BitTorrent packets. And they were allowed to because the FCC could not discipline an information service. Plus, we have other ISPs such as Madison River and TELUS blocking VoIP calls and their competition back in 2005. AT&T blocked Skype and Google Voice on iPhones back in 2007 to 2009, and Verizon was caught blocking tethering apps in 2012. Just to name a few, you know. All right, just to name a few. Then we also have ISPs stating in quotes that Title II regulation has not hurt them or their growth as ISPs, and the fact that millions and millions of people were impersonated on the FCC comment database over the summer. Oh, and let's not forget, there is the whole thing with Comcast deleting their pledge about promising not to do paid prioritization the same day the repeal was announced. Now, admittedly, none of us know the future, nor are we psychics, but we can look back at history to educate ourselves on what has happened in the past to move forward towards positive upgrades. From the Telecommunications Act of 1996, which made common carriers sell access to networks in a non-discriminatory way, to the Supreme Court's 2005 decision on ISPs allowing them to block rivals from their lines or charge more, to the 2015 Title II net neutrality regulations and now the repeal of 2017, we have seen a lot of back and forth of ISPs and we will probably continue to see that in the future. Now since the core of ThreatWire starts with security, privacy, and internet freedom, you can probably make a consensus on where I stand on the subject. With that said, even with the Decepticon bots making the same slurs in the comments and the lack of historical evidence that we have seen flying about, I will definitely continue to share my concerns on the future of our internet freedom, whether you like it or not. On the same day as the net neutrality repeal vote, FireEye disclosed on their website information regarding malware that targets industrial control systems, or ICS for short. Dubbed Triton or Trisis, FireEye believes that this malware could be built to cause physical damage or inadvertently shut down operations. It is built similarly to Stuxnet, which in 2010 was used to attack Iranian uranium enrichment plants. Triton attacks equipment built by Schneider Electric, which is used in oil and gas facilities, as well as some nuclear and manufacturing plants. 
These components, called Triconic Safety Instrumented System Controllers, or SIS for short, are used to alert humans of dangerous problems in the facility by triggering alerts or shutdowns. If tampered with, the SIS could fail to shut down or send out alarms, which could lead to disastrous consequences for the people, the plant, and nearby areas. FireEye discovered the malware when a plant they were working with had a mysterious shutdown of their SIS controller, at which point the plant entered a failsafe mode and everything shut down appropriately. The malware was traced back to a Windows PC on an SIS engineering workstation where it was pretending to be the real application. FireEye suspects that this is the work of a nation-state actor, not a cybercrime group of hackers, due to the fact that Triconic's SIS tools are not publicly documented, and according to Drago's security firm, the malware was distributed on one victim's machine in the Middle East, though the exact location and victim is unknown. Three young men ages 20 to 21 pleaded guilty in regards to creating and operating the Mirai botnet, which was used back in October of 2016 to take control of security cameras, DVRs, and other IoT devices, which in turn attacked Dyne, which is a service employed by sites to manage DNS, thereby taking down several different popular websites in a distributed attack. The men named Paris Jaw, Dalton Norman, and Hosiah White pleaded guilty to conspiracy to violate the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. The FBI explained that while they were not responsible for the actual attack, they did create and operate the botnet. The men released Mirai to public forums and they sold it to criminals online, and they also pleaded guilty in regards to another botnet called ClickFraud, which grossed 100 Bitcoin in profits for the three. They will each serve up to five years in prison and fines of $250,000. They also had to turn over several Bitcoins each to the US government. Jaw also faces another 10 years and another $250,000 on top of that for involvement in using Mirai to take down a New Jersey university these servers. The criminals were first outed by security journalist Brian Krebs way back in January, when his site was taken down by the biggest DDoS attack ever reported, which just so happened to be Mirai. The Justice Department released a statement regarding the three men on the 13th. Thanks again to all of the wonderful people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. You are the reason that we can keep on bringing you news each and every single week. We are on the way to our next goal, which allows me to upgrade some of our equipment for the set, which I am super excited about, as well as opening up a live video Q&A just for patrons each month, and that's gonna be really fun to talk to y'all all the time. Any little bit helps us grow the show, and in return, you will get access to a bunch of extras over on Patreon. We might even feature your adorable first fur baby in an upcoming episode just like these. They're so cute. I've got a lot of new fur babies to show off, so stay tuned for those. And if you are a Patreon, make sure to send over yours. Check out the perk levels on Patreon, and thanks again for helping us keep the show completely independent and ad-free. And of course, if you cannot donate, hit that subscribe button. Share this episode on your favorite social media page. I might even retweet you. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.